Alison, a lovely song to establish our theme this morning. Could we have the first slide, please? Um, so, welcome to everybody for this service on Easter 2 from St. George's and Clane's churches in Worcester, and wherever you are around the world in this country or just down the road, we welcome you as you worship with us this morning. Although it's Easter too, I feel like it's really our Easter day because it's our first full joint Zoom together since Easter. So this Sunday is often called Low Sunday. And in the old days when the choir worked very, very hard for Easter Day, the choir normally took the day off on, on this date and a lot of other people took that opportunity as well. And uh, perhaps some do this morning as well. But I'm hoping today that we're going to celebrate the risen Christ. So we will now begin our service. Our responders today are Lynn and Clive. So if the rest of you will make sure you stay muted, they will give the responses, but please join in in your own homes. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. Our prayer for today, the collect. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we are going to sing together. Alison is going to lead us once more as we sing Jesus Christ is risen today. I should say, before we start, Alison, uh, if you've got a ribbon around to wave during the Alleluia's, that would be great. You could clap along. Oops, get my ribbon. Right, let's do this wholeheartedly.
Thank you, Alison. I enjoyed being able to sing that after last week, although it was in the service, of course, we couldn't sing along. So I'm sure some of the other people really enjoyed that chance to sing one of our great Easter hymns. And now we're going to turn to our Bible reading from the epistle, first epistle of John. Over to Francis. So the reading is taken from 1 John chapter 1 um, and into chapter 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we've seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We're writing these things to you so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, who is he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Francis. Uh, you read well that rather powerful reading. And now we're going to turn to that lovely song, Be Thou My Vision. Verse up, please. Can we have the last verse, please? Starts hiking of heaven. We'll just carry on then, Alison. Sorry. I 
King of heaven, when battle is done, grant heaven's joy to me, a bright heaven sun. Christ of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision, O oh, Thank you, Alison. And now for our gospel reading, read by Judy Hooper. Judy, you need to unmute. Am I unmuted? <laughs> Hi. The gospel reading is taken from John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the Gospel reading. Thank you, Judy. That was beautifully read as well. Two very powerful passages, I think you might agree, this morning. And uh, that wasn't the, the epistle, that, uh, epistle wasn't the reading that Joe had originally set for today, but it was one of the alternatives. And I felt that they, they really match each other, this gospel reading and the epistle, because the gospel reading is about the presence with the living Christ, isn't it? Yep. So here's Jesus, here's, here's the disciples, and there's poor Thomas. Like, Thomas gets such a bad press. I, I, I don't think he deserves it. Why does he not believe it? Is it is it because he doesn't care? I don't think so. I think he's so reluctant to believe because he cares so much. And it's such a big thing to ask someone to believe that someone has risen from the dead. And in fact, the disciples weren't convinced when the women came and told them at first, were they? So Thomas is not unlike any of us, I think. It, we, we're reluctant sometimes almost to believe in case it doesn't work out. Yeah, and there might be some of you in your journey of faith, that's, that was your experience. You were frightened almost to believe in the risen Christ. But then we come to the epistle, and the, in the epistle, it tells us 
that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. It's because they'd been in that room and they had touched the body of Christ. They'd seen him with their own eyes. That is the powerful witness that the apostles have to share with us. That is what makes someone an apostle. And Paul is only called an apostle because on the Emmaus Road, he encountered the risen Christ. And that has such power, doesn't it? He breathes into them the spirit of God. And with Paul afterwards, uh, some of the other apostles come and pray with him and he receives the spirit of God and is empowered in his ministry. It is meeting with the risen Christ that gives us faith and empowers us. It's what enables us to go out and share what we've experienced. And when we meet the risen Christ, our response should be the same as Thomas's. My Lord and my God. And when I was reading that this week, it really struck me. This is the depth of Thomas's faith. He doesn't respond by saying, oh, great, you're here, you're back. He responds with my Lord and my God. That's a huge leap of faith from believing in someone as your friend and maybe just as the Messiah who's risen from dead to seeing him as your Lord and your God. That's not a half-hearted response. It's complete. For some of us, our experience of the risen Christ may have been a sudden one, or there may have been moments along the way when that at least happened. For many of us, of course, we've grown up with the presence of Christ all around us. I remember my children very small, talking about Jesus. I remember when I was very small, my relationship with Jesus. But somewhere along the way, hopefully there are other encounters. There are times when we feel so close. When I met my second husband, Roger, we went out for a while and we, we, we drifted apart. The time wasn't right. And a few years along the line by divine intervention, I think, we came across each other again. And I knew, I knew immediately that he was going to be the one for me. It took him about 18 months to catch up because he's a bit slow like that, you know. But about 18 months later, I suddenly realised something was different in him. And I said to him, something's changed, hasn't it? And he went, yes. You love me, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He found it so hard to see it. He'd, be, he'd always said he wasn't going to get married again. He wasn't going to get, you know, he couldn't fight it. So though we'd had a lovely relationship up until then, there was then that moment when there was an encounter of true love that could lead to true commitment. And I think it's the same in our relationship with God. Sometimes it's very pleasant, goes along on an even keel. But sometimes we're lucky and we get these moments of real joy. It might be things like an Easter service or a Christmas service when we just feel the presence of, God, of Jesus Christ so deeply in our lives. I hope that you've had some experiences like that. And if not, I hope that they are to come for you. It may be that you're actually quite reluctant to have that experience. You're not somebody who likes to get overexcited. You're not like somebody who wants to be one of those people, one of those rather, you know, churchy, religiously people who actually talk about Jesus. I'm not sure I want to be that. You know, I'm quite happy where I am. But I hope you do meet with the risen Christ. Because what the disciples say in 1 John tells us, we proclaim to you what we've seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That is the centre of our fellowship, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know absolutely 
that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your God, how are you going to share that with anyone else? And if we do know that, how can we not share? Very easily. Because I can look around and I know that we all struggle with sharing about Christ. But if we are walking in the light, how can we leave others in the dark? Don't we want them to encounter the risen Christ? I was lucky enough when I lived in Hong Kong to meet Jackie Pullinger on several occasions. She's a, an amazing woman, um, but very ordinary woman. But she left England and went to Hong Kong. The missionary societies wouldn't back her to go to Hong Kong, but she knew God was calling her to Hong Kong, not anywhere else, Hong Kong. She went there to the Forbidden City and you know, there are books about what happened there. But her, her message is a very simple one. And I remember hearing her interviewed on Hong Kong radio. And she said, I introduce people to my friend, Jesus. Can you not do that? Can we not introduce people to our friend, Jesus? I wish I could have the power when I do it that, that she had. Because when you have seen heroin addicts recover with absolutely no drugs and with no withdrawal symptoms. I tell you, that is, that is powerful. Well, well, most of us are not Jackie Pullingers. Most of us are not super, super uh, evangelists, but we are people who have met Jesus. We are people who can share Jesus. Many of us at this Lent have been studying Hannah's book, well, Living His Story, written by Hannah, who's the daughter of uh, our dear friends David and Alex. And it's re reminding us to look at our story of Jesus and share that story with others. That's all it's about. Maybe during this week, you might not tell somebody a whole story of your face. That might be a big step. But maybe you just mention Jesus once or twice when the opportunity arises and you wouldn't normally. Because if you don't, how will other people know? Not about your face, but how will they know about your God? About Jesus and what he means to you. Jesus said to Thomas, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Well, that's it. We have seen and believed even if not with our eyes or touched with our hands, the body of Christ. And I pray that though you may not have seen that living risen Christ, that you may have encountered him and that you may walk in the light of the Christ, that you may bring the light, hope, love, healing and forgiveness to those that you meet along the way. Amen. And we don't often say the creed, but we're going to say the creed together. It seems right in our Easter mode that we're going to say the creed. So it's a responsive one, but you can obviously join in all the time you want at home, as long as you're muted. But uh, Clive and Lynn will pay, say the responses for us. We believe in God the Father. From whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now uh, uh, we're going to have that lovely song, The Peace of the Earth. Alison's been singing it a few times before the service starts, so you'll have heard it. And she's going to play it through twice. So hopefully by the end of the second, the first singing, you'll be able to join in if you're not very confident. <laughs>
now Barbara Ronson will lead us in our prayers. The risen Christ is here among us today. Let us pray in his name for the church and for this world. Father, we pray your blessing on Christians worshiping today all over the world. And we pray that all who doubt your word have their doubts taken away. We pray for St. John the Baptist Claims and St. George's Church, for their clergy, for all who minister to us and for the congregation, that you will breathe the Holy Spirit on us. The response today to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family as they mourn the death of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We give grateful thanks for a life well lived and his immeasurable service to our nation and to the Commonwealth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all the areas of the world torn apart by hatred and violence, famine, disease, or religious differences. We pray especially for the people of Northern Ireland, for Myanmar, for Syria, and for the Yemen. We pray for those who seek asylum, for refugees, for the displaced, and for the hungry and homeless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who face rejection if they become Christian, and for all families divided by beliefs or persecuted for their faith. We pray for the children of our church, that they may grow strong in faith by our good example. We pray for those who do not yet believe, that they will hear your word and be encouraged to follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our community, for those who have struggled in lockdown, face job loss, poverty, hunger, or have no permanent home. We pray for those who wake again in pain, distress, or mental anguish, for those who are suffering with COVID, and for their families. We pray for all who long to have someone to spend time with them, enjoying their company. May their reunions be joyful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who mourn, especially those known to us. We pray for those they love and miss. We commend all who have died to your everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we take a few moments now for our private prayers. Father, with joy in our hearts, we thank you for the new life opened up for us through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we say together the family prayer of the Church. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the power, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for those lovely prayers. And now we're going to share the peace together. So although we may do it silently, we can of course use our hands, we can just wave, blow kisses, or if they're sitting next to you, you can give them a kiss and a hug in person. Can we have the slide please? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you all. Screen through your gallery if you like to make sure you've waved everyone. Check who's here. James, I saw, I saw James in person last week and saw how big he's got. I can't wait to see Emily. I bet Emily's going to be huge when I see her, isn't she? So tall. Yes. It's going to be lovely when we can get to see each other a lot more, isn't it? Um, just not many notices this morning, I think. Um, just a reminder that on Wednesday, both churches are open in the morning for private prayer. We are going to be looking at reopening for services in not too long, but not just yet, a, lot, a few steps to take before we can get there. And a reminder that tomorrow evening our Lent course starts again. So if you haven't read the chapter, you've got a bit of time to read it. <laughs> yes, Paul, you're looking guilty there. <laughs> so let's, um, let's sing our final hymn which is quite a long one, and again, you might want to clap, wave things to this. It's the spirit lives to set us free. It fits in so well with our reading this morning, doesn't it? Walk in the light.
Thank you, Alice. That was a, a great hymn to finish on, I felt. Um, so now we're going to do our blessing and sending out. Just spend a moment to look at that picture before I do the blessing. You know, it just for me symbolizes the empty cross has become put to us a symbol of hope and new life. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empowers and fill us with Christ's peace. Amen. And before our sending out, I think, I think we should do something we don't normally do. I think we should have a, a minute silence altogether for his Royal Highness, we've got his right title, the Duke of Edinburgh. So a, a minute silent, please, and then I will do the sending out. Thank you. I'm sure all of us are holding Her Majesty the Queen and all the, the royal family in our prayers at this time. I don't know about you, but one of my prayers has been that this death will bring a, a reconciliation in the family as well. Those are estranged because deaths are often not just times when there is division, but the mutuality of mourning and grief can bring people together. And I pray that this may do that for them. And now our sending out. We've heard the good news, Jesus is alive. Let's share it with the world. We have heard the good news. Let's, Let's live, live it in our lives. Christ. Hallelujah. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're now going to uh, say goodbye to our friends on Facebook. Before that, can we just have the slide? If what you've heard this morning or something that you've sung has spoken to you need to talk to anybody, please feel free to message Rev Jo or email her or just put something on the, the, um, the church Facebook. If you need help, we will find a way of responding to you. So goodbye to everybody now on Facebook and those who are watching later on YouTube, hope that you've been blessed by this service and that you may know God's rich blessings in the week ahead. God be with you till we meet again. Thanks for joining us. Bye.